Father God, we give you thanks this morning, mighty God, everlasting Father, the great I am. Lord Jesus, we say thank you this morning. Holy Spirit, as you're about to feed us, open up our hearts this morning. As you feed us, God, let us, Father God, want to hold on to it. Let us want to really understand your word. So as we get ready to open up your word, open up our hearts and our minds this morning, Father God, like never yet before. Give us an understanding heart, an understanding mind. Give us your spirit of wisdom and revelation like never yet before. Pour out, pour out. As you pour out, Father God, let us soak it up. Father God, let us soak it up like a, like a dry sponge. Let us soak it up, Father God, that we leave nothing when we leave out here. We take it all that you prepared for us this morning. We take it all, Holy Spirit. So as you feed us, line upon line, precept upon precept, rightly dividing your word of uh, truth in our hearts and our mind, let us soak it all up this morning, oh God. That will bring clarity. That will bring greater deliverance. That will bring greater understanding. That will enlighten us, enlighten us, illuminate us in your light, oh God. For it's only in your light that we have light. So Father God, Jesus came to bring the light to all mankind. So we take that light this morning, Father God and Lord, that there be no dark areas in our lives in the name of Jesus. Oh God, let your light shine in every dark area of our lives. Every dark understanding we might have here this morning. God, let it be expelled this morning in the name of Jesus. That when we leave out here, Father God, we leave, Father God, with greater faith, greater belief, greater confidence, greater trust, greater understanding, greater awareness, Father God, of all, Father God, that you need us to get and to understand and how to keep Satan under our feet, Father God, how to walk in this victorious life that Jesus Christ died to give us abundant life more abundant life god and we take that this morning we take nothing less than all that our that our lord and savior jesus christ died to give us he came to set the captives free and so father god we declare that every day of our lives we will continue to stay free we'll be free father god and we'll not allow father god the cares of this life to weigh us down the cares of this life to steal our joy Father God, in the name of Jesus, not when you say for us to cast it. So God, we give you thanks this morning as you feed us. We say thank you in Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Amen. Topic, the word for this morning is face your fears. Face your fears and hold on to joy. Face your fears and hold on to joy. Let's turn to Psalm 34. The book of Psalms 34. Read in verse 4. Psalms 34. Read in verse 4. Ready, read. I sought the Lord, and he heard me, and delivered me from all of my fears. Amen. One more time. I, I sought, sought the Lord, Lord and he heard me, and delivered me from all of my fears. Amen. So if you feel like the bottom is gone out, and you feel like you're dropping, you have faith and confidence this morning knowing that. If you seek God, if you sought God and his word, then he have heard you. So if you sought him by his word and through his word and you prayed and you brought it before, God let me let you know this morning, he have heard you. Not only have he heard you, he have delivered you. Amen. So there should be no fears in here today. He have delivered you. And this is the word that we have to hold on to this morning. That God is our deliverer and he has delivered us from all fears. So we can walk in confidence and boldness knowing that when we give God his word, when we pray, when we ask, when we knock, he will hear, he will answer, he will do. For I have sought the Lord. 
And he heard me. Past tense. He heard me. That means before you could go to God with anything, he already knows you come in bed. So he heard you before you open him out. That's how much he loves us. That's how real he is. To know that no matter what it is on your mind that's pressing you and feel like the bottom getting ready to drop out, trust you me, the bottom can never drop out if you're in Christ. Amen. Never drop out if you're in Christ. He heard me and he delivered me from all my fears. So we have to take a hold on God's word and know for sure that one, he cannot lie and if he said it, it's finished, it's final. So our faith have to keep us in God, in his word, and keep us believing that God cares, as his word says, and he can do it. Satan, the God of this world, the system of this world, he is not stronger, more powerful than God. He is a created being. He was created. Just how God made us, God created him. So know for sure that the God that we call Abba is far greater than any demon. Amen. Any fallen um, angel. It's far greater. He made them all. And they are all subject to God. So when we feel as though the bottom has gone out or dropped out, and feel like we're going to fail, we're going to fall, we're not going to make it. Take your faith and your trust in God, your trust in the word and put it to action. In other words, speak now, silence those thoughts, silence the enemy because those thoughts are not coming from within you. Those thoughts are coming from the enemy, your adversary, the devil. And why? Because he wants to keep us out of the best what God has for us. Whatever it is that you are in need of today, your God knows what you need. He's not going to call himself your shepherd if he cannot meet a need you have. He will never say, I am your shepherd, you have no want. Who can make such a bold statement? Who can? Except God. Think about it now. That's a bold statement. God, uh, you putting me to the test now. You trying to tell me I must prove you? Well, let me prove you. I need. See, if we don't open our mouth, then fear will cause us to say, stay silent. Oh, I can't speak that now because I know if I can get that. Watch what you mean. If it line up to the word of God, then know for sure he heard you. But we have to come with that faith and that belief in God and his word that if he said it, it's final, it is finished. Because if we are seeking God, God say, we will, be found, we will find him. If we are seeking truth, we will find truth. If we are seeking to know him, we will know him. But our part is to have faith and to believe. Our, faith, our, our part is once we have faith and we believe, we now have to take it. Take what you believe in. Take what you go into God for. Faith is what every Christian needs because the word of God says, faith, without faith it's impossible to please God. And in order for us to get anything from God, we must have that faith. Faith, also, we know in Hebrews 11, we can turn, turn there. Let's go to Hebrews 11, um, verse 1. Hebrews 11, verse 1. This tells us, it speaks about, it speaks about faith. It speaks about faith. It tells us what faith can do, what faith can bring. So it really, really opened up our mind about faith. So we're going to read 11, Hebrews 11. We're going to start at verse 1 down through 6. 
highlight what you need to highlight. But we're going to take our time because we need to know what faith is. This has been a subject that has been on my mind, looking for clarity for a long time because it's, it's, to me it's kind of hard to understand, but for me it was. So we're going to read Hebrews 11 verses 1 through 6. Ready? Read. Now faith is the substance of things, the evidence of things not seen. For by the elders obtain a good report. Through faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God, so that things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. By faith Abel offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain, by which he obtained witness that he was righteous, God testifying of his gifts, and by it, he being dead, yet speaketh. By faith, Enoch was translated that he should not see death, and was not found, because God had translated him. For before his translation, he had this testimony that he pleased God. But without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Amen. So one says, now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. So faith is substance. In order for us to see any, any of our prayers come to pass or manifest in the earth, we must pray them in faith, believing in God and his word. That when we pray our prayers, we pray them in faith. When we pray or we give our prayers, our supplications, our requests to God, we pray and we present them or give them to God or ask for them with faith. Not just faith alone, but that we believe that God will give them to us. So we have to believe, first of all, that God can do it. We must believe that God's word is truth and that whatever we ask for, we will receive it. We have to believe that God is God and his word will manifest on the earth. Simply put, we need faith and we need trust. We have to trust God. We have to trust his word. We have to believe this word. We have to believe this word. When I pray and I ask God for anything, I pray, I don't pray prayers without. I believe once I, I make that request known to God, I believe that it's done. So I, I, I shut down every thought that will try to come and say, well, you know, it's been a week, it's been the day, two days, that ain't, that ain't gonna happen. I shut down those words. I shut down that voice that is saying that to me. And I hold on to truth. And the truth of God's word is that he cannot lie. And that I ask that he will, he will give it. So I hold on to the word of God. And I hold on to nothing else. And I, I, first of all, I got to come believe in this. I have to come with faith because without the faith, without belief, then you're wasting your time. So if you're coming half believing, half, half trusting, half doubting, then you're already failing this request. This request have to come forth with full faith, believing in God's word, believing in God, and having faith in God and having faith in his word. God and his word, word are one. So when fear comes, fear comes, and fear comes to steal. Fear comes to destroy. Fear comes to kill. Fear comes to stop us 
Fear comes to bring failure. Fear comes to bring loss. Fear comes in every way if we fear it. If you fear, you'll never have children. If you fear, you'll never have more than what you have. You fear you will never have what it is you're praying for, then that fear will come to pass. So don't put energy and focus in fear. Because if you have that fear, just like Job, Job, what he feared the most came upon him because of fear. He was so afraid of losing his children, afraid of losing his wealth, his goods, that it was so heavy on him, on his mind so much, that he ended up losing it all. He was afraid of losing his health, lost his health. Boils break it on him. All seven of his children died in one day. Well gone in one day. So everything that Job fed came upon him. And he was a righteous man. He was a man that loved God. And he, um, he did good to all that were in need. He made the widows laugh, the fatherless. He made them happy, made them joyful. He gave them bread, gave them food, gave them what their need was. So he did what God tell him to do. But he had a serious fear. He feared he was going to lose his children. He feared he was going to lose his health. He feared he was going to lose his wealth. And everything that he feared, he said, what he had feared the most has come upon him. So whatever it is you fear, and you really seriously fear that, if you don't get rid of that, it's going to come to pass. Regardless of what that fear is, it will come to pass. So we have to learn to face our fears. Don't pretend it ain't there. Say, okay, now God, I fear full of such and such. God, how do I deal with this? Because your word said it did not give you the spirit of fear, but a power, love, and a sound mind. So God, give me power, love, and a sound mind that will show me how to deal with this fear. Give me understanding to show me how this fear came and how to shut this down. Because truly, fear is a spirit. It is a spirit that will come to steal and destroy. It's a spirit that opens the door to every other spirit. So fear must go. Fear must go. Anyone that is fearful or not trusting in God, you will see them worrying a lot. Worry and stress and anxiety come out of them when fear is present. When we trust God and we trust him with all of our heart, all of our soul and all of our mind, it gives way destroys fear because if our faith and our trust is in God then whom shall I fear nothing there's no need to fear anything if you trust God with all of your heart all of your soul and all of your mind then you know that that God God Almighty will keep you from every fear popping into you you know that once you pray to God your father he will make it come to pass. Because no matter where we are, if you are a child of God, no matter where you are, God is with you. He's with you now. When you're in your car, he's with you there. On the job, he's with you there. In school, he's with you there. Walking on the street, he's with you. He's always with you. So if you are always with God, why are we walking in boldness? Why are we walking bold like a lion? Why is it that we are not opening up our mouth with, with power to shut down Satan? Because if Satan can steal your voice, then he's going to silence you. And if he silences you, then fear really speaking loud to you. Whenever I pray, I pray knowing that God has already answered me. Because he said, while I'm yet praying, he will answer. I believe God's word. I believe this is, I believe God's word more than I believe myself. Let me tell you why. Everything that we see, we just read it. Everything that our eyes see is came out of something we didn't see. Everything that we see now came from a place that we cannot see with natural eyes. So everything that we see existed long before the pair here. Everything that we see appeared in 
what we never saw. Come on. So God that we serve, he is in a place that we cannot see. Mm. It exists. Hallelujah. So when, when we think of God and where he is, the word of God says he is, he is, he is in the third heaven. Seated on his throne. Christ is at his right hand of the throne that he's seated on. And we are in Christ. It says we are in heavenly places. So where our God resides and lives is a place. Yes. And it's real. And so what we see here came from there. Jesus. So when I pray, I pray knowing that I am in heaven with him. I'm not praying in the car. I'm not praying to my desk. I'm not praying in the kitchen. I'm not praying in the front room. I'm not praying in the bathroom. I am praying in heavenly places in Christ Jesus in my God. So my faith, my faith in God and in the Word takes me there. Come on. You can't get in God's presence without faith. Jesus. You cannot believe this word without faith and trust in God. So when we pray, you're not sitting in your bedroom. Wherever you meet God, you are there in body. But our spirit is joined with God. And God is seated in heaven. So we have to take let our prayers, our prayers have to take us in the presence of God because our prayers will be answered when we understand who we're praying to and where we are when we pray. We, when we come to God and we ask God for anything, it is where? Let's go now, let's go to the word. Let's go to Ephesians chapter 1. Ephesians chapter 1, reading verses 3 and 4. Ephesians chapter 1, reading verses 3 and 4. Ready, read. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who had blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ, according as he had chosen us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love. So, God has blessed us. God, our Father, and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, have, past tense, have blessed us with all spiritual blessings in Christ Jesus. So this takes care of everything you could possibly want in life from now until you die or Christ come, whichever one comes first. It says... Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who have blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ Jesus, according as he has chosen us in him, saints of God, before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love. Before him in love. So when we bring our prayers to God, when we pray asking God for anything, you come from distance. That one, it's a blessing. It's coming from God. God have it. It's in heavenly places, meaning that it already exists. All of your blessings. <clears throat> Anything that you want from God already exists. It exists in heavenly places in Christ. Meaning it is in the unseen, but it is very much so real. 
It is real. So whenever we come to God, get rid of fear, get rid of doubt, get rid of unbelief. We have to come knowing that, look, this is God. This is the creator of everything. This is God Almighty. And he have already spoken. And he have already given. He already made provision for me. Until I die. Everything that I could possibly need is in heavenly places. And that belonged to me. In Christ Jesus before the foundation of the world. So if my blessings are not moving, the question is, God, why are you taking so long? Father God, I don't see it yet. But God, you know, I serve you and I do this and I do that. No. God did his part. I have blessed you in Christ Jesus for our spiritual blessings. And God did this before he made the foundation of the world. So he took care of all of our needs, all of our desires, all of our wants before we were born, long before we were born. So when it comes to coming to God for anything, we come with faith in this word that whatever I'm asking him for, he have already given it to me. And it exists in heavenly places, which means in heaven. It's already there. And all we have to do is come to God with faith. So let us stop worrying. Stop having fear. Stop stressing. God gave us the answer to everything we need. We must search the word of God, but we must believe this word. This is Jesus. The holy Bible that you have is Christ. So when we doubt this, when we don't believe this, he's saying, Jesus, I don't believe in you. God, I don't believe you can take care of me. God, I, I, I don't know you. Who you are? Who are you? I don't know you. But it ain't that you don't know him. You choose not to know him. So when, when you choose not to read this, when you choose not to study this, you choose not to know about your Jesus. You choose not to know how to get your blessings. That, that exists. It exists. It's real. It's real. It's real. So why would God hold a car from you and have you walking out in the hot sun? You feel the hot sun today? Yes. Ain't known yet. It ain't known yet. You walk out there, you stand out there, you probably get a headache. Why? Why should you walk? Why should you doubt God can't give you a house? When he said, I've already blessed you. With all spiritual blessing. It has to be spiritual because you serve a spirit God. It has to be spiritual because we are spiritual beings. We are spirit beings. We came from the Father. We came from him as a spirit. Jesus. In an earthen vessel. This is only dirt. What we see is only dirt. Meaning that this dirt is not legal in heaven. No. Our spirit. So when we meet with our God, our flesh don't meet with God, you know. Amen. Our spirit meet with God. Jesus. Why? So we have to know who we are and where we are in Christ. Christ have seated us in heavenly places in him. So that means life should be at ease. If we learn how to trust him, get rid of fear, get rid of stress, get rid of worry, get rid of anxiety. Stop trying to build your little egg nest. Or I should say egg nest, what do you call it? Your little retirement plan. Stop trying to build that. Stop trying to build that. We spend so much time trying to get these things that already exist in every place. Come on, come on. We in our flesh, in our flesh, we try. We try all we can to get a good life, to, to want a home. And you know what the world tells us to do? Get a good education, get a good job. So that you can take care of yourself. But where is God in that picture? Amen. The, wor the world excludes God. We cannot have life without Christ. Amen. There is no real life, no joy, no peace. That will give you that fullness and completeness. And make you whole. If it's not God. It is only in Christ. That we get that. And so when you find yourself. Sitting back trying to figure life out. And 
when you go to the food store, the first thing come with your mouth, oh, these things are expensive. Well, this was just five dollars yesterday. Yeah, it's ten dollars. How you? How I suppose? How people supposed to live? How you supposed to make it? Well, you just put a case on you. That's right. See, your grocery is in heavenly places. What you need is in heavenly places. You ask God for it. What get them to move? Your faith. Your belief. Your trust. Because if we trust in to put ourselves, to put bread on the table, to keep a roof over our head, then we again, that's the world system. Where is Christ in now? He's excluded. When we take and we follow Christ, we follow Christ and we, we follow what he tell us to do, which are his commandments. And so fear come on us when we take our eyes off of Christ and we try to make life work. And we try to live life without Jesus. And it becomes a struggle. It becomes fearful. It becomes worrisome. Anxiety. Depression. These things come when we don't trust God. They come when we don't trust God. We have to get to the place where we believe and trust God for everything. Everything. So let us get rid of fear. Fear will stop us from getting to know God getting to trust God, getting to in a place and a level in God to where no matter what happens, we know that God has us. Do not take this Bible light. Do not take the word that you read lightly. For us to get anything on this earth, it has to come from the place of the unseen which is called the spiritual realm. So everything that we have, everything that we need, everything that we desire, everything that we want in this earth must come from the spiritual realm. Have to. And in order for us to see it manifest on the spiritual realm, we must give agreement to God. And we must get rid of fear because if we don't get rid of fear, we will see what we fear come to pass. And a lot of times the fear come to pass because we don't have that faith that we need and that belief that we need in the word of God. And so we read in, and let's go back to Hebrews, let's read it again. Hebrews 11. Hebrews 11, read in verse, verses, well, we read the whole thing again. One through six. One through six. Hebrews 11, verses one through six, ready, read. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. For by it the elders obtain a good report. Through faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God, so that things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. By faith Abel offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice than a king, by which he obtained witness that he was righteous, for God testifying of his gifts, and by it he being dead, yet speaketh. By faith Enoch trans translated that he should not see death, and was not found because God had translated him. For before his translation, he had this testimony that he pleased God. But without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Amen. So 3 says, through faith, we understand that the world's, were framed by the word was were framed by jesus the son of god so the things which are seen the house the car the chairs the furniture which are seen were made of things which do appear i write that right so that things which are seen were not made of things which do a pair. So the chair, the house, the car, which you appear, what you see, the trees, 
the ocean, the sea. These things that we see, they all came from things that were not seen. So they all came from the unseen world or the spiritual realm. So when we come to God, we come to God with our faith, believing that once we bring our requests, desires to God, that he will cause them to manifest on the earth. Without faith, it ain't happening. Without faith, it's not going to happen. If you don't trust this word, if you don't believe that God is able to give it all to you, no matter what it is, then you wouldn't see it come to pass. And this is where faith rob a lot of people. Faith, not faith, fear robs a lot of people. When we walk in fear, when we try to live and do things in our own strength, we have a God, we have a Father, and all, it, all he needs us to do is to believe. Believe. He just needs us to believe. Believe in him. Believe in his word. Believe that he can do the impossible. Because he really can do the impossible. He can do the impossible. I watch him do the impossible. Impossible with man. But very much so possible with him. So we have to just do away with fear. Fear must go. And we have to hold on to our joy. And to hold on to joy is to hold on to the word of God and to believe God's word. If we really, really seek the Lord and we trust his word, he will hear us as we just read in, in Psalm um, 34. I saw the Lord and he heard me and he delivered me from all my fears. He delivered me from all my affairs. That's past tense. So what is it that you are afraid of today? What is it that you fear the most? Give that to God. Get rid of it. Because if you don't get rid of it, it will manifest one day. Get rid of the fear. Get rid of the worry. Get rid of stress. Get rid of anxiety. Stop trying to do it without Christ. Amen. Keep your faith strong. And unable to keep your faith strong, we have to stay in the word. We have to stay with, in, in fellowship with God. Talk with God. Open your mouth and talk to God. And, and there are times prayers might be hard to come or you can't find the right prayer to pray. My go-to prayer is Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. <laughs> Jesus, 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 Jesus. Let me tell you something. Sometimes the flood water come up so high. And the fire gets so hot. But I dare not to say, God, take me out of this. Yeah. See, I used to pray that prayer. Whenever the test came and the trials come, and sometimes I feel like I'm drowning. I feel like as though the fire was getting too hot. I would say, God, take me out of this. I can't take no more of this. God, take me out of this. Get me out of this. Uh, I prayed that so serious and so full of faith that he took me out. And I can tell you one thing. Maybe a month, two months, you catch yourself. But sometimes it lasts that long. You find yourself right back to the same test. Going back through the same test all over again. So I learned to stop saying, God, don't take me out. I say, oh, Jesus, 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 Jesus. That Jesus means, God, I need help. Father God, keep me, keep me, keep me, keep me. Help me, help me, help me. But I've learned to turn to Jesus. God is my go-to everything. I don't just find him when my back is against the wall. I give God thanks my back is not against the wall anymore. Because I refuse to allow me to get there by self. Self used to cause my back to get to the wall. Why? Because I wasn't trusting in him. I trusted in me. I trusted in the paycheck. And I knew once I gave my 10% to God and I gave my offering to God, I knew I was straight. So I know what left. I knew how to make that work. I knew how to put that in the bank and put that down. I knew how to go ahead and say, look, I can get this piece of property and I can get that by X, Y, Z. And let me tell you something, I got it by X, Y, Z. My first piece of property I got before I had a car. Before I bought a car, I had a piece of property. Because why? I had a, and still do, I have a mind to always want not to be in lack. And so what motivated me to want to get my own things was that I don't never want to have to go begging and ask nobody for nothing. Mm -hmm. um, 
I didn't want to be relying on nobody. And I felt once I could be able to put myself in position, then I could also help God's church if I had more to give. And so that was the angle I came from. And so instead of depending on God, my full faith and, 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 and trust was in me. Was in me. Because I know once I make this money, I know what I was going to do with it. Like I said, my first piece of property, I purchased that before I purchased a vehicle. I got the vehicle, vehicle shortly after that. But I had land before I had a vehicle because far as I concerned, I need a land to build a house. And I didn't want a house. I wanted a triplex. Because I know if I build a triplex, I have income. So my mind was always going, going on how I was going to retire very young. Very young. And so I always had a plan. But my plan was not God's plans. And even though I was a Christian from very young, my plan was my plan. I never took and asked God about that plan. That was mine. And so I was going and chucking along very nicely. Very nicely. And 10 years later, I got another piece of property. And shortly after that, I had already started putting my building down on that. But I became comfortable in my own strength. And so God was like, okay, now, nah. time for me to reel you in. <laughs> and let me tell you something, I got reeled in. I got reeled in because I was like, God, got to be more to life than this. So if you are putting all of your energy and trying to get a, something for yourself, a roof over your head, piece of property, a nice business that will bring you into wealth, don't put all your time into that. Take your time and give it to God. Because at the end of getting that, there is still loneliness, there is still emptiness, there is still no relationship with your Jesus. Build your relationship with Christ first. And as you build that relationship, trust you me, he's going to increase you. Because if you do this word his way, the faith goes away and he will increase you. But he is going to get you to a place where you trust him. We have to trust him. Because if we don't trust him, Jeremiah, I tell you, Jeremiah 17, let's go there. This delivered me and this freed me. This freed me from self. This freed me from depending on me. This freed me from the curses that I was trying to figure out why things still happening, why I cannot seem to get ahead or stay ahead, even though, even though I had more. Even though I had a stronger relationship with God, even though I had more material um, possession or wealth, but yet there was still lack. And so when I found Jeremiah 17, verse 5, so we read 5 and 6. Jeremiah 17, reading verses 5 and 6. Ready to read? Thus saith the Lord, Cursed be the man that trusted in man. And make it flesh his arm, and whose heart departed from the Lord. For he shall be like a heath in the desert, and shall not see when good coming, but shall inhabit the past places in the wilderness, and assault and not in So when God showed me this, I was like, What? God? I repent, it must be for three months. I, I repent, I had a serious repentance going on, and every time I thought about it all through the day, I probably repent at least 100 or 200 times a day, because this stayed on my mind for months, to know that as long as I read this Bible, as often as I've read this Bible from front to back, in the middle, from the back, in the middle, to the side, from the middle, to the front, and I studied this Bible, and I was like, God, I see the spirit is being. Because I was fighting God and didn't know I was fighting God. Because I say, Thus said the Lord, Christ be the man that trusted in man. So I trusted in me. And I was putting a curse on my head. So guess what? When I should not have been in the wilderness, I was in the wilderness. And I was parched and dry when I should have been lush and moist. I was parched and dry. And this, it made my life start to, it makes so much more sense because I was like, God. You mean, I was pushing and chucking along and making it 
and praying and fasting. I could have just asked. I could have just asked. And I was like, God, and I've gone through all this, all these years, and I could have just trust you. I tell you, it took me about three months to get over this. Because half was up, I was upset with myself. And then I was sorry that I didn't trust him because I really thought I trusted him. Because see, when it came to giving, I didn't have a problem giving. Never had a problem giving tithes. Tithes is something I haven't missed tithes in. I can't even tell you alone, 30 plus years. I don't miss tithes. I've been paying tithes. And so it wasn't the giving. I didn't have a problem with the giving, but it says, if I put my trust in man, in self, in the paycheck, in me, then I automatically come under curse. And so here it is. I break in all kinds of curses, denouncing, renouncing, and cancel, all kinds of generational curses, all kinds of self curses. So every time I break a curse, this curse comes right back on me. So I was fighting myself. So I tell you, it took me about three months to get over Jeremiah. Because I was like the God. Well, oh, you want to show me this? Who oh, is the guest? I blame it. Oh, you want to show me this? God, the Holy Spirit, use my help. Why you want to show me this? Then I had to apologize for blaming him because I read the Bible. I studied the Bible. He said, study to show yourself approved. I was going along with my own plans. This is where a lot of people mess it. We, we love God and we trust him, but we don't trust him with all of our heart. As Proverbs 3 say, trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not to your own understanding. I trusted him, but I was leaning to my understanding. And the world tell me I need to go and make sure, prepare for my retirement. But how I get to retirement and I start doing God work yet. So what happened between him and retirement? Wow, what wow, what I missing in here? Because I was moving from here all the way to retirement. So in here was for me it was just play. I was gonna retire and I was gonna live. Because I love to travel, I enjoy travel. So my plans was to set myself up financially and travel. And of course, give to God's work. See, that for me, that was given to God is very easy to me. No matter what he asks of me, I give it freely. So being a, a, a free giver comes easy for me. So God was in down in the giving part. But in terms of serving, nah, I had a problem with that piece. I had a problem with that. I didn't want to be no pastor. I didn't want to be no preacher. In fact, that was never no plan of mine, never, ever. I could live five lifetimes and that would have never been in my plan, no time. So being a pastor wasn't something I was pursuing. I, I didn't want to be a pastor. I, didn't. I ran from it. So the fear that was on me caused me to run from God. The fear that was on me caused me to put all of my time and energy trying to make my future, my, my pension comfortable to where I live comfortable. So that was my fear. My fear was of tomorrow being in lack. My fear of tomorrow, not having enough. That was the fear that drove me to work hard. And when I say work hard, I'm talking about working uh, uh, a month with maybe one day off. Sometime two days off, I would take in a month time. And I'm talking about no, no um, eight hour days. I'm talking about 16 hour work days. And I'm talking about one to two days off each month. So, like, I, so I know about hard work. And so I was pushing this, and trust you me, I was making it. I was making it. I was already looking at ways on how to finish up the second floor the before and to start my, my other three units. I was already looking down that road. And so God was like, okay, now hold on, hold on, my child, hold on, hold on, my child. <laughs> Let me read you in. You done had enough for this. You done had enough of this. This was your share. And all of this happened in my 30s, in my 20s, in my 30s. Remember, my first property I got at 22. My second I got 10 years later. So by 32, I already had two properties. By 35, I was already in my own home and getting ready to build another building. So I was already chucking along. Chucking along. And not trying to rob somebody, but by hard work. By hard work. By working hard, putting in the hours. And of course, Given my share to God, I never messed with that tithes and that offering because I was not going to be one who's going to rob God because I couldn't afford no curse on my head. But here it is. I was putting the curse on my hair because of fear, fear of my tomorrow, fear of not having. And so I was putting this same Deuteronomy 
um, 17, 5, and 6. Cursed be the Alvonia that trusted in her and made it flesh her arms and whose heart departed from the Lord. So how could I be running after the things of God if I'm running after the things of me? And so I was right there in this Jeremiah destroying myself because my, all of my faith and trust was not in God and my belief to know that he could take care of me. So I had to get rid of fear. I had to get rid of fear and get rid of it fast. And so if we trust God and we really believe God, then fear goes away because when we read, let's go to Matthew chapter 6. When we read Matthew chapter 6, this is Jesus again. And, and there's another chapter I love. Matthew 6 tells us, gives us a good, good detail as to how to go about getting from God. How to go about seeing your spiritual blessing manifest in the earth. So we're going to start in Matthew, Matthew 6, verses 24 through 33. Matthew chapter 6, reading verses 24 through 33. Ready? Read. No man can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. We cannot serve God and mammon. Therefore I say unto you, take no thought for your life, what ye shall eat or what ye shall drink, nor yet for your body what ye shall put on. Is not the life more than meat, and the body than raiment? Behold the fowls of the air, for they sow not, neither do they reap, nor gather into barns, yet your heavenly Father feedeth them. Are ye not much better than they? Which of you, by my taking thought, can add one cubit unto his stature, and by your taking thought for raiment? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow, they toil not, neither do they spin. And yet I say unto you, that even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Wherefore, if God so clothed the grass of the field, which today is, and tomorrow is cast into the oven, Shall he not much more clothe you, O ye of little faith? Therefore take no thought, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or where shall we be clothed? For after all these things do the Gentiles see. For your heavenly Father knoweth that ye are need of all these things. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Amen. So 30, 33 says, But seek ye first the kingdom of God um, and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. So everything that we look for on a daily basis um, to live and to have a good life, um, we get we get them but we only get them when we trust God when we believe in his word when we know without a doubt that no matter what we ask that he will bring it to pass seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be given unto you or provided for you but don't put trying to provide for you ahead of seeking the kingdom. That's what I was doing. I was putting the clothes, the building, everything before God. Wrong order. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And then I say all these things shall be given or provided. Righteousness. His way of doing and being right. Righteousness. So when we 
bring our prayers to God. We bring our prayers with faith, believing that he will answer us. But the first thing on our mind shouldn't just be things. Know that they exist already. The things that we run after, they already exist in heavenly places. So we know where they're located. They are real. They are real. Heaven is real. God is real. He lived there. And we are seated there in Christ. So we know that the God we serve is real. And we know that when we bring our prayers to God, they are life. They are, the words are living. And if we are speaking life, then life has to come. So when we pray to God, we pray to a real God who answers true prayers. True prayers that are prayed in faith, believing and receiving what you pray for. So when we come now and we allow fear to enter into our hearts, then our minds start to wonder. Well, I wonder if God heard me. I wonder if this it's too much for me. I wonder if God can do this. Maybe I need to ask for something smaller. Maybe I, I can't afford a $200,000 property. Maybe I should get a $60,000. Maybe I should look for a $60,000 property. See now, you have to know the difference of when you're speaking and when God is speaking. Our faith should take us in the presence of God. Our faith in God's word should take us to a place in our minds that no matter what we ask for, provided that it's not asked for out of loss of the flesh, that we will get it. So if what you're asking for is not a selfish need or selfish desire, or you only want it because now you want to brag and show off, as long as you're not letting your flesh get in the way, then your faith should stay strong in this word to know that you present it to God, God will make it manifest on the earth. Your faith causes it to manifest on the earth. Faith speaks to the unseen. Faith is a substance. It is tangible. Faith only speaks to the unseen. God is in the unseen, but he's real. So when we pray in faith, our faith is talking to the unseen. You don't need faith to notice a building. You can see this. You need faith to believe in the building you want to be your home, out west, out south, in the north, over the bridge. You need your faith to see that. And so your faith is speaking to that house. Your faith is speaking to that um, position you're looking for. That's what your faith is speaking to. So you, your faith is speaking to the unseen that is real. So we see unseen, unseen exists, unseen is real. So we, our faith will take the unseen into the sin. So it pulls the unseen into the sin. It exists, it's real. So when we pray, we pray knowing that the house is there. That car is there, my job is there, my position is there. Your faith now have to pull that. Your faith now, your faith in other words, give God permission for that to manifest on the earth. So if you don't have no faith, you don't see no manifestation. If you don't have no faith, that stays in the heaven, third heaven. If you have no faith, your faith will cause it to come down. Your faith don't cause it to exist. It already exists. It's there because God says it's there. And it was there before the foundation of the world in Christ. So everything that you need exists already, but it's not on the earth. So for it to come to the earth now, your faith brings it down here. So without faith, it's impossible to please God. Without faith, it's impossible you get what you're praying for. So if you're praying and you, mm, I don't know if I can get this. You need to come together. You are spirit, soul, and body. So the three parts of you need to come together with the word. You need to be, you need to be in unity, in unison. So you need to, the three of you have to become that one. That one. Believe in the word of God 
and the faith that you have is built. God, I know this is done. Like Jesus said, when he was going to feed, I think he's going to get what, Lazarus. Maybe it's get Lazarus. He told Lazarus' sister, you just have to believe. You just have to believe. Jesus said, I'm only praying this, I'm only saying this for the ones that are around me. In other words, he didn't have to say it. He knew that God would do it. So Jesus never had a problem believing that God would do what he said, what he asked. We allow fear to come in and to hinder our, our growth. We allow fear to come in and to stop us from receiving from God. We allow fear to come and rob us of that blessed life that Jesus has already given to us. Whenever we pray, we are ready and we are with God. God is always present. I am in, I am in the Father, the Father is in me. I am in you and the Father is in, is in Christ. And Christ is in the Father. And we are in Christ. So if we are in Christ, the Holy Spirit is in us and God is in us. God the Father. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit is in us no matter where we go. So whenever we are praying, we have to pray. Um, pray your prayers saturated with faith, believing that you will get all that you pray for. So when I come to God, I come to God with a scripture. What gives me right to come. And when I come with that scripture, I come knowing that his word is final. So COVID fast, I can say COVID is finished. Okay. COVID is over. But where I work, you still see, you still see, you still see, because where I work at the airport, so you still see people with masks on. But in my mind, COVID is over. So the reason why I say that is because Jesus died and he by his stripes, I was healed. So I will never walk around with a mask and say, boy, I better protect myself now because I, I can't afford to get COVID. I can't afford to get sick. No. As far as I'm concerned, if it come on me, it can't stay. It can die. It touched me. It's going to die. Because this is God's words. By his stripes, I was healed. And not only that, when we are reading Galatians, Galatians says that God, God, our God, has blotted out all the ordinance that was against us, all the legal, all the legal rights Satan had to bring sickness, bring infirmity, bring poverty, bring loss, bring stagnancy, bring failure, everything that he had legal against me, God blotted out. He blotted it out. And he blotted out for us. So when I come and I come with my prayer, I say, the sickness can't come here because first of all, God is God. Amen. First of all, God, God is God. So we have to believe that God is God. And if God is God, and he said, in the beginning was the word, and the word was God, and the word is God, then this word is God. Amen. So that doesn't settle in my mind who God is. Amen. It doesn't settle in my mind that he has no beginning and he has no end. That doesn't settle in my mind that he is the creator. That doesn't settle in my mind. Why? Because he has shown himself to me time and time and time again. Amen. Put God to the task. Test him. He said, bring your case with strong reasonings. When you bring your case with strong reasonings, he being judge, he have to rule. And if it's strong reasoning and you are right, you will hear, yes. You will hear, amen. And you will see the manifestation. So when you come to God, come knowing that you already have it. It exists in heavenly places with you in Christ and it's in the unseen world and for that to come down from the unseen world I must ask this is what God said I must do I must ask I must ask and if I ask and I first of all come with faith and I believe this then I should see the manifestation you should see the manifestation so make sure you are asking, make sure you are praying, and make sure you are praying the word of God. And when you build your faith and your trust in God, then your love starts to grow. Because God is love and God lives in you. And so love now takes us over. And when love enters in our hearts, love gets rid of fear. 
Let's go to First John. So we need to get our love strong. God is love. Go into First John. Read in verse. 18. Actually, we can read 16 and then 18. 1 John chapter 4, reading verses 16 and 18. 4, verse 18 and 8, 7, 16 and 18. Ready? Read. And we have known and believed the love that God has to us. God is love. And he that dwelleth in love dwelleth in God, and God in him. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear, because fear has torment. He that feareth is not made perfect in love. Amen. There is no fear in love. And remember the two commandments that Jesus gave us. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God. But all thine heart, all thine soul, all thine mind, and all thine strength. And thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. There is no fear in love. So if you are fair, do you have love? There is no fear in love. But perfect or mature love casts out fear. But perfect love casts out fear and so when you always hear god always talk about we must love we must love we must love it's because the more you love the more fear is uprooted and gone forever if you're fearful and worried and stressed out and got anxiety or something have you depressed then you need to take it to god and say god i don't like this feeling this is a spirit and i need it to leave and i need it to be gone forever so all of us who are not walking in love, who is not doing what God tells us to do, which is love your neighbor, love God with everything in you, then we need to get there. We need to stop putting a curse in our head by trusting in self. There is no fear. There is no fear in love. But perfect love can so fear because fear have torment. You ever see somebody who's a heavy thinker? Have a smile on their face. You ever see somebody who got something running across their mind, like we say, just running across their mind? I think it running, I think it's circling. Because <laughs> it ain't leaving. I, I ain't running if it wanna leave it. But I think, I think it's circling. So if it's just circling, you see their face just make up and then they, they face long. Something going on. Something going on. Don't let it be you. Perfect love casts out fear. Because fear of torment. Get rid of fear so that you're not tormented. That's a demon. And it will torment you to death. It is a demon. And if you are fearful of one thing today, by next week, three weeks later, you done got ten things out of that one thing you used to be afraid of. So now you're afraid of ten things instead of just one. Afraid of dying. Afraid of your parents dying. Afraid of your children dying. Then you're afraid you can't eat because you ain't making enough money. Then you're afraid you're going to lose your job. When, when does it end? Mm -hmm. Then you're afraid you're going to die um, lonely or old and lonely or broken and lonely. When, where does it end? It ends when we decide we're going to stop worrying. When we're going to seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, that's when it's going to end. That's when it's going to end. Don't run after the cares of this world. They are temporal and they are added freely when we seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Do it God's way. Let's go to Romans chapter 14. Romans 14. Reading 17, Romans chapter 14, verse 17. Ready, read. For the kingdom of God is not meat and drink, 
but righteousness and peace and joy in you. Amen. One more time. For the kingdom of God is not meat and drink, but righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. So we just read in Matthew where Jesus said, Seek ye first the kingdom of God. And now here we read and it says, For the kingdom of God is not meat and drink. So when you seek the kingdom of God, that means you only seek it meat and drink. But it says it is righteousness, God's way of doing things, the right way of doing things, and peace and joy, but as well, in the Holy Ghost. Where? In the Holy Ghost. And where's the Holy Ghost? Ah, where's the Holy Ghost? In, in us. So the kingdom of God is where? In, in us. us. Yay! Hey! For the kingdom of God is not meat and drink. The devil will tell us it's meat and drink. The devil will keep telling us, you need to make sure you have money in the bank because you, what if something happened? What if this happened? What if that happened? Well, the Lord is your shepherd. You shut him down with that. You say, Satan, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. I have no one. Get out of here in Jesus' name. So you have to open up your mouth and just shut him down. Open up your mouth and shut him down. This is not the time to allow fear to get into your hearts. Now, see, Satan will always find, he have vessels, and he have, he have so many vessels. Don't allow those vessels to come on you and to cause your foundation in Christ to be shaken. Oh, well, well we don't know for the next recession coming. Where recession? Where are coming? Where are coming? Oh, you know, we gotta, we gotta prepare. We gotta, why you wanna prepare for something bad? Why? But this was saying to say, well, we ain't out of the woods yet. That could be another one. If you if you hear that, see you hear what Satan saying. Satan saying it could. It only could if you give if someone give him agreement for it to come. Then he said, God got agreement. Now I can bring it. He can't bring it if you say no. Fear will cause us to say some things that will put the nail in your own coffin. Get out of the coffin. Jesus came to set the captives free. And whom the Son set free is free indeed. So we are free from the cares of tomorrow. We are free from every burden that the enemy might try to bring. You cast it, fling it, throw it on him. Because only Christ can carry on things. Our bodies of the flesh is not built for that. There's a reason why so much there's so much sickness. Oh, there's so much sickness. There's more sickness now than when our grandparents, great-grandparents was alive. They had no bunch of clinics and, 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 and hospitals. No. You get a little cough, they go outside, get this brush, get this leaf, get this vine, wash your hair, go in the sea. They had the remedies, why? All from the word of God. Amen. The leaves are for your medicine. Hey. So we gotta trust this word. <coughs> oh, I gotta get some cough medicine. <laughs> what is it going to be? Are you going to trust God with everything? Or are you gonna trust self with everything? So we have to we have to arise, we have to rise up in the word. And we have to make a stand up. God is God. I am his child and he provides for me. He takes care of me. And I have to do my part for his part to be played. And my part is to follow him. Pick up my cross and follow Christ. Love God with all my heart, soul, mind, and strength. Don't have no other gods because we just read it again. No one can serve two masters. Either you're going to hate one and love the other or you're going to hold to one and despise the other. Which one are you going to despise? I know one thing. For me, I didn't make up my mind. I didn't make up my mind. So we have to get to the place. Who are we going to serve? And we can't just serve him on Sundays. It is every single day. Because if you're only giving him enough time, one day out of the week, you know there's seven days, right? Mm -hmm. There is seven days. So if you're only giving him one day, what will happen to the next six? Who are you giving that to? So let us not allow fear to come in and stop us from being what God have us to be, to give him glory. Solomon, the wisest man that ever lived and will ever live, there'll never be a wiser human being on this earth according to God's words. 
He said, there were, the wisdom he would give to Solomon would be greater than any before him and greater than any that will come after him. That means, I don't care how they may come, never will be more. But at the end of his life, he said, I have nothing back for myself. Whatever I wanted, I had. He had 1,000 women, 300 wives, and 700 sweethearts. Come on now, one man. <laughs> There's only 365 days in a year. He can kill himself. <laughs> but he said he had nothing back from himself. Whatever he wanted, whatever. In other words, whatever he lusted after, he got. And at the end of his life, he died a broken old man. And he said, vanity, vanity, all is vanity. Don't get to that place where you say vanity, vanity at the age of 65, at the age of 50, say all is vanity. No, no. You have purpose. You have a destiny. Don't waste it like King Solomon. Don't waste it. You have a lot of people. They're just trying to please this flesh. There's only so much the flesh can take. And guess what? When you sow to this flesh, it say you reap corruption. So you don't want to reap corruption by sowing to the flesh. We are spirit being. And our spirit is joined with Christ's spirit. So we are one with him. And, and the opposite of that is the word of God. So if you join yourself to harlot, you become a harlot. So be careful who you're joining yourself with. And in our, in our quest for things, and for more, let us make sure we're doing it in Christ. Because everything we could possibly need already exists. We already have it. What is for me, is for me. God have yours, God have mine, God have our family members. Every person here already given their allotment in life. Go and get your allotment. All you need is the faith in the word and God and your prayers saturated with the word of God. Your trust and your faith will bring it down in the earth because it already exists. For the kingdom of God is not meat and drink. And be trying to make it about meat and drink. It's not about meat and drink. But righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. So when I get in, let us get understanding today so that we kill fair today. Kill fair today. Do not let this come back and speak on you and stop you from holding on to joy. The kingdom of God is righteousness, peace, and joy. And joy in the Holy Ghost. So face your fears and hold on to joy. Get those fears and you kill that spirit today. Stop being afraid. Don't live in fear. Don't allow Satan to cause you to be worrying unnecessarily. It cannot, like I say, you can't turn one hair gray, one hair black. Let us make sure. Stop the worrying. Stop the worrying. Stop stressing. Enjoy life. You have today. Tomorrow is in promise. Don't wait and say, oh, tomorrow is going to be better than today. How you know that? How you know that? Well, I, I, I was better off last week. Maybe that might be true. Maybe so. But you don't know today you have. Somebody who was there in your life yesterday or a week ago, then there today. So we have to not allow fear to stop us from enjoying the now, the right now that we have. Right now. Don't lock away yourself from the world because your mind always everywhere other than you and that moment. Do not stop living. Live. Enjoy where you are in God. Take all of your plans and give them to God and trust Him that He will make them come to pass for you. No matter what it is, there is nothing and no one greater than God. For he is the great I am. He can do the impossible, whereas we cannot. But in Christ, we can do the impossible. And, oh, and he will not promise us something and not do it. He will not promise us something and not deliver. Let's go to Numbers chapter 23. Numbers 23. Numbers 23. 
reading verse 19, Numbers 23. Numbers 23, verse 19. Ready, read. God is not a man that he should lie, neither the son of man that he should repent. Had he said, and shall he not do it? Or had he spoken, and shall he not make it good? Amen. So these are questions. This is your God. Yes, he has spoken, and yes, he can make it good. And no, he cannot lie. Cannot lie. Cannot lie. He never could lie. Satan on the other hand, he's the father of lies. He's the father of lies. So don't believe that Satan says to you. But believe everything that God says. If he said, then he can do it. If he promised, then he can make that promise real and good. So let us hold on to truth. Let us hold on to God's words. And let us kill fear today. It's a spirit. Uproot it out of your foundation and get rid of it. Some of us came from a line of warriors. Some of us came from people mandated that move fear. Oh, you can't go to the You better be in my house for that for Get home, get home, get home, get home. They did it out of fear. You're 20, they're 30, and they're still driving you around. <laughs> Why? They didn't want, they afraid something to happen to you out there on the road. Fear. Fear. And so we have to stop letting fear consume us. It is a demon. And it will stop you from the good that God has for you. Do not allow fear from this day to destroy anything that God has for you to delay anything that God has for you to kill anything that God has for you take fear and uproot it and cast it out of your foundation cast it out of your forefathers foundation forever and you put love and say father God my foundation is built in the foundation of Jesus Christ. Therefore, Father God, love is in my foundation. A sound mind is in my foundation. Power is in my foundation. Belief is in my foundation. I believe in you. Faith is in my foundation. Make sure your foundation is solid. Make sure your foundation is really built in the, so in the foundation of Jesus Christ. You make sure that you are solid when it comes to this word. So that when hard times come, when testing come, you do not shake to the point where you uproot yourself and run from there because of fear. Fear will cause people to do some crazy things. But knowledge, knowledge, knowledge will cause you to stand your ground in God. That's the word of God. Put on the whole armor of God that you'll be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. That means it come in. But we are not to be afraid of it because we read in this word that he's our shield. He, God is our shield, our glory and the lift of our heads. He is our shield. That means he covers all of us. Nothing is out for the devil to take a throw dance in the hip. He's going to throw the dance. But because God is our shield, protects us. And we have to believe his word. I don't pray prayers and uh, doubt them. Several years ago, God said to me, I was praying and I... I I had to have been praying and, and praying with fear. And, and God said to me, so you, you could believe the prayers you pray. He said, you could believe the prayers you pray. And then he said, why pray if you're not going to believe the prayers you pray? But that brought it home for me. From that day, I said, you know, God, that's true. Why would I pray if I don't believe that it's going to come to pass? I'm wasting time. And I have no faith. I have no faith in, in, in God. And I have no faith in this word. So I have to change that. And so if God don't tell me I could believe the prayers I pray, then that means I'm praying the prayers right. Because my prayers I pray to God. First of all, I ask the Holy Spirit to pray. Give me the prayers to pray. Let the prayers come out of my mouth. Well, you have to come out, first and all, to make sure my prayers are answered. And of course, I have to come believing that he has heard and answered me, and he will answer me. So let us be hopeful, let us be joyful, let us have that peace in God, and let us not put our faith in nothing other than in God. Romans 15, last one. Romans 15. 
read in verse 13. Romans 15, read in verse 13. Ready, read? Now, now the God of hope will fill you with all joy and peace in believing that you may abound in hope through the power of the Holy Ghost. Amen. One more time. Now the Lord of hope will fill you with joy and peace in believing that you may abound in hope through the power of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Through the power of the Holy Ghost. So you say again, Holy Ghost and Holy Ghost. Twice we saw the Holy Ghost. You have to know God. You have to believe that He indwell you as a child of God. He indwell you. That means you can have conversations with Holy Spirit. He is the one who teaches us. He is the one who does the work through us. Holy Spirit. And it says that now the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace. Again, joy and peace. You have to have joy and peace. If you don't have it, you want to ask yourself, but God, why is it I'm not happy? Where is the joy that i supposed to have? Or do I supposed to have joy? Well, according to this word, you should have joy and peace. Peace is so important for us as children of God, as saints of God. We need peace. We need joy. These are all promises, all good things that belong to the body of Christ. Get it. Get a hold of it. Um, don't let it go. I refuse. When this year rolled in for me, I say I reject all bad news. I hear no bad news. I reject all bad news. Don't miss, do you can't come here. I'm taking it, I reject it, don't come here. I have nothing to do with no bad news. I say I am taking good news, only good news, awesome news, great news, and every day is a great day. I used to have good days. I stopped having good days. I now have great, awesome, amazing days. It's getting better and better, greater and greater, sweeter and sweeter. Why? Because I choose to believe this word that he has died to give me life and have life more abundantly, abundantly to the full, to the overflowing. And so I choose, I choose to trust him. I choose to take all of my cares and say, here it is, Jesus, take that. Because I can't handle it. Here it is. And I fling it from me, meaning... Fling, um, um, cast means to throw it and throw it far away from you. So if you, if you have any care, any stress, any worry, anything that's on your mind and is on your mind constantly, you need to give that to Jesus. And to give it, he say cast it. And to cast it means to throw it. You know why he wants you to throw it? So you don't go looking for it. <laughs> Some of us just won't go looking. We don't pick it right back up. Don't pick it up. Refuse to pick it up. Trust him. Better. Okay, God, I trust you. If you got to go like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, their test as God, man serving God, their test was if they was going to renounce God. So their test was, do they love their life more than God? And that test came to them when there was an image made and they had to worship this image. Of the king and another land that they was taken slave as taken taken into as slaves so they were slaves to this king and they had this image and they were supposed to bow down and they refused to worship any other god other than god their father the god of their ancestors and so the king tell them say look here just bow down. Just, just. He didn't want to kill her. Just bow down. They said, King, we do respect. Do respect. But we would rather lose our life than to, than to renounce God. So we choose not to denounce God. We choose to lose our life than to denounce God. So he got so angry with them. He said, throw him in the fire. And he was so disgusting. He said, turn it up seven times harder than it is. Mm -hmm. Why? Because they choose to serve the real God. Yes. And not a fake God. Right. Not an idol. And so he turned up the furnace seven times harder than it was. Fire. Real fire. And the man, he got some strong men 
thinking that they was going to fight, thinking that they didn't want to die. Caught some big, strong, muscular men, and they bound them and threw them in the fire. And the thing is, the ones who threw them in burn up. That's how hot the fire, the fire was so hot that it was leaping up out of the furnace. And so as the fire was coming up out of the furnace, the men who bound them and threw them in, they died. So the king now, thinking now it was finished, when he looked, he looked, and he looked again, he's like, what? What? What's going on down there? So he said, come here, look in here, how much people you are seeing here? He said, they say, he said, did we throw three in there? So yes, he throw three in there. So when they throw, he said, but I see four, and the fourth one is like the Son of God. They choose to follow God. And by them choosing to follow God, they gain their life, and they got promoted. They gain their life because they choose not to bow to Satan. They choose not to serve another God. Their life to them, they would rather lose their life than to denounce God. In our nation, thank God, this is a Christian nation. This is a Christian nation. I hope we never get to the place where we have to denounce him in our nation because this is a Christian nation. This is a nation that serves God. And so we get to serve him freely and openly, but yet we have some who want just play church, want play serving him. We cannot play with God. We cannot play this walk because Satan know who is really God's and who is just lukewarm. So get rid of fear and choose who you will serve. And if you're going to serve God, get rid of fear. Only have one God. You can't serve two masters. Make up your mind to have one. And when you make up your mind to have one, get rid of fear. Close the door to fear. And, a, and hold on to joy and peace. Hold on to righteousness. Seek truth. Seek God. And it says, seek ye first the kingdom of God. So let us make sure that our stance, our trust, our belief, and our faith is in God Almighty. Trust your prayers you pray. Walk boldly in Christ and don't walk in fear. Every day, your life, your, of your, every day of your life should be a life pleasing to God, meaning that this word is the beginning and end. For us. This start us off and this end us. You stay in it, you trust it, you put it to the test. Because if you want the life and you want that joy and peace and that peace with Christ leave us, it is only in God. Get a hold of the Holy Spirit and you walk with him every day. He is the one that's going to do the work through you. Get a hold of this knowledge and you work it. I trust God. And so when I come to God and he tell me, move, I move. I say, now, God, I can't. He say, you need to see where you got. You got my hand and that's all you need to. Mm-hmm. Hold on to me. Hold on to God. Trust him. Know that his word will not return to him void or not return to him empty. But we need to give him back his word as his word says. Come with strong reasonings. Come with strong reasonings. If you, if you, know, if you know and trust his word, then you can ask for anything and it will be done. Anything. And make sure you're asking not from the lust of the flesh, but you're asking because it's a need. Amen? Amen. Father God, we give you thanks for your word this morning. Lord, as we, if we have fear, Father God, that is stopping us, causing worry and stress and anxiety to come, Lord, we repent. For you say you did not give us a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. And God, you didn't give us fear because fear has torment. So, Father God, we, can't, we repent for, first of all, allowing fear to come into our hearts. We cancel all agreement with the spirit of fear. We denounce, renounce, and uproot it out of our foundation, out of our forefathers' foundation forever. We call on your consuming fire to burn the evil altars to ashes that open the door to fear in our lives. 
And Father God, I ask you to shut every door to fail. Give us your strength, Father God, to stand against the wiles of the devil in our whole armor that you have provided for us. So let us take a hold of truth and righteousness like never yet before. Let us take a hold of, 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 of your word and stand on it, for it is our sword. It is our sword. And Lord, we need it. Let the words that come out of our mouth only be your words because it is life. It is spirit. And it will manifest what we speak. So God, let us only speak life to every ear of our lives in the name of Jesus. And God, as we are root out of our foundations, Father God, lay now, Father God, and deep in our foundations, Father God, joy and peace. That peace and joy that is full of glory the joy and peace that Jesus Christ died to give us. Holy Spirit, you are, com you are a comforter, you are a helper, and we are, we are in you and you in us. So therefore, Holy Spirit, let us hold on to you. Let us trust you to grow us and to strengthen us in this word. As we open up your word, Father God, let it, Father God, make the connection that we needed to connect. Everything, Father God, that we needed to connect to and to make sense and bring understanding and clarity. Every time we hear your word, see your word, speak your word, trust your word, and also study your word, let it, Father God, come together more and more. Father God, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.